Hey, my dear friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the 2022 Mercedes-Benz AMG GLE 53 SUV. This is really right in the middle of the entire product range for Mercedes-Benz when it comes to SUVs. So we're going to take a thorough walk around inside and out. We're going to take it for a drive and then I'm going to tell you what I really think. Before we get out in the test drive, let's talk about the particular vehicle we're looking at today. This is a mildly optioned GLE 53. Now, the GLE 53 in the AMG line is really in the middle. There is a much more powerful version above this and a less powerful version below this. This is the more powerful of the inline six options. And so as tested, we're at $83,000, just about, just a little bit under, and this does have a base price of 74. So as you can see, we're about $8,300 in options. So looking at what we do have here, the front end has AMG specific styling, the vertical slat grille, and the lower fascia is AMG specific. It's got a sportier, more aggressive look than you're gonna find on the standard GLE. And the headlights on this, of course, LED, and they have a very unique signature light up at night. Coming around the side, this has 20 inch wheels standard. Now these are the standard alloy wheels. They did not put optional wheels on this. And if you've been on the Mercedes-Benz website, you know there are a multitude of wheel options that you can choose for this. Part of the styling that you get with the AMG line are the larger fender flares, and you can see that in body color, the wheel at moldings, and they go straight into that unique AMG front fascia. From this angle, you can really see what these fender flares are doing back here. They're a little bit wider on the back because we've got wider tires and wheels. And so they not only give that tire and wheel package a little bit more space to live in, but they really give this a more planted and aggressive stance. I really like the look that it adds to this vehicle. Coming around to the back, power hatch, as expected in this price range, you can operate that with the key fob and a number of other ways. It's a great thing to have when you've got an armful of groceries at the local store. And taillights back here, LED of course. And looking down into that lower fascia, some nice detail down there. And some beautiful quad exhaust finishers. Now I call those finishers because they're not actually exhaust tips. Good news is you're not gonna burn your leg on those things on a hot summer day. But if you look up inside there, you can see that the pipe doesn't really connect to them. I mean, air does blow through them. They've given us a bone there over the fakes that you find on the lower GLE models, but Come on, guys, just give us some real exhaust tips. Don't do this Hollywood fake stuff. It's tacky. It's beneath. It's beneath, especially in this price range. But I digress. They do look very handsome. The interior of the AMG Geely 53 is a place that I am very happy with. I've been very happy with every Geely I've ever sat in. And this is a nice example because it's not representing every single option on the interior, yet it does have a number of upgrades. And so looking out here across the landscape, you can see things like this gray oak trim, which has a natural finish. It's actually kind of rough to the finger a little bit. You can feel the grain in it, a genuine wood, of course. And the dash is wrapped with MB Tex, which is vinyl, but it's a soft, stitch trim that has a very handsome look and is a step up from the standard molded dash panel. Ambient lighting can be seen everywhere. This is cycling through different colors as we've been sitting here doing shooting from purple to blue to red to pink and it's just very elegant especially at night. These are some highly crafted sport seats with a lot of bolstering going on. Napa leather it's been optioned here. Pretty good option $29.90. I think it's well worth it. They're heated and ventilated. Another option. I've been sitting in them all day long on our video shoot day about eight hours and um, I'm not ready to get out of them just yet. So if you're looking at the AMG consider the fact that you get these seats definitely worth the choice there alone. The steering wheel in front of me, the AMG steering wheel. Now this is not the optional one that has the extra controls on it or the suede trim, but it's a great steering wheel. It does have thumb controls on it, both touch controls as well as knobs and buttons for the infotainment as well as the instrument cluster, which you can see is fully digital. And that is customizable in a number of ways, depending on themes you can pick, the drive mode, all of these things change that up and you can also customize the information sets that you're looking at individually for each dial as well as what's in the center. It's great. It's just like having a computer or a phone and being able to completely customize it 
your way. Looking down at the center stack area, four large vents all the way across, HVAC controls just below that, and you can see this beautiful wood top, which is a roll top cover. You can open that up to give you access to cup holders down below as well as a place to put your phone. Coming back behind this is the touch sensitive controller for the infotainment system and a number of buttons that represent hard controls for that system. A little puck to land your hand on, helps steady you while you're driving, and then controls to the rear of it for the drive modes, the air suspension, and some of those things. Inside here is a pretty generous level of storage. It's a little bit larger than a single square tissue box. Also in there, more USB port. Expected, but not always delivered, is comfort for the backseat passengers. And just like I have been in past tests of this vehicle and other variations of it, the rear seat comfort is very good. These are seats that are comfortable. They've got good support. They're just the right balance of firm and soft, I think. And the seating height is good. You can see my knees aren't perched up. I'm not sitting down in a hole. And look at the space I've got back here. Very impressive. These seats are set for my height, about 5'8 with my tennis shoes on. And I've got a lot of legroom. Somebody here could be six foot six with the seat all the way back and I'd still be doing pretty good. A lot of amenities back here. There are AC vents on the back of the console, power ports down at the bottom to plug in your devices. Now these seats, they do fold down in a 40, 20, 40 split. You've got a centerpiece that can fold down for things like skis and things like that. And the load floor is nearly flat when these are down. And even when they're up, there's a lot of cargo space back there because we are in a two row SUV and underneath that floor is a space saver spare. Now that may go away depending on how you option this vehicle. If you get the third row or some of the larger tire wheel packages, that may not always be there. You might have a fix a flat kit instead. When it comes to rating this interior, I am duly impressed. I love the craftsmanship. I love the design. When this full glass piece first started appearing in Mercedes Benz's, I wasn't too jazzed about it, but it's really been growing on me. It works great. That's a big compensating factor. If none of this stuff really worked that well, it, it, you know, it'd be a gimmick, but I'm, I've really come to like the looks and the ability to use it in the way of controls, the craftsmanship of the switch gear, the materials and the overall design and comfort and versatility of this interior just really fire on all cylinders. This interior gets five out of five stars. The infotainment system here is not the top of the line, but it is a well outfitted system, 12.3 inch screen, fully touch sensitive screen, and you can control this also with thumb controls on the steering wheel. There is a touch sensitive pad on the steering wheel that you can navigate the menus or you can do it by touch on the screen. And there's also a touch sensitive pad down here on the console to control what's on the screen. So you have three different ways in which to do this. There's also hard controls, which is something I always harp on. There's some down here, some on the steering wheel, even though we don't have the traditional knobs up there. This works. I like the controls. As far as features are concerned, there are some things that you can add to this in the way of options, but it does have Burmester sound, which is absolutely amazing to listen to no matter which source you're using. It has menus that are very easy to use. They're graphically fascinating, I think. And I like the fact that they've really laid this out in a way that integrates well with your phone, whether it be Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. They've just really done a good job here. They've ironed out all the kinks and I think it is now one of the best systems you can get out there in the luxury field. This infotainment system gets five out of five stars. All right, my friends, time to take a drive. And you know, the first question I always like to ask is how does it go? So we're out in the middle of nowhere, nobody around and go. Woo! <laughs> nice sound and 60. Woo! Listen to that. Okay. Ooh, I got it in sport mode, so it's hanging a little bit on the RPMs. So under the hood is what I think is a pretty remarkable engine and one that's very unique in this class these days. An inline six turbocharged engine, Mercedes finally brought it back. In this particular trim, it has 429 horsepower and 384 pound feet of torque, an AMG tune. And here it comes mated to a nine speed automatic transmission also with an AMG tune. So. 
It is the more powerful of the two inline six engines that you can get in the GLE. Because it's an inline six, it has a level of refinement and smoothness that you don't often get with a V6 engine. This is rated at 18 city, 25 highway, and 19 MPG combined. And in my week with it this week, I did achieve that 19 MPG. One of the other systems this has on it is the EQ Boost, which has an integrated starter motor, uh, which means it's a mild hybrid. And with that, it also has auto start stop. And so I come to a stop sign here, engine stops, let off the gas. It's very quick to respond and back on the engine is. Now, normally I'm not a big fan of auto start stop systems, but here, it's not so bad, and that's because this is a mild hybrid with the aforementioned integrated starter generator. It starts this engine up in an instant, but more important than that, because this has the 48 volt mild hybrid system, the air conditioner also runs on electricity. It's not engine driven, and so what that means is, is when that engine shuts off while you're sitting at a stoplight or in gridlock traffic, the air conditioner still blows cold. One of my big chief complaints about most auto start stop systems. So I'm not complaining about it here. It's very well done. If all auto start stop systems were like this, well, not very many people would complain. That said, overall, I am very pleased with this powertrain. It's got power, it's fun to drive, it works well, it's got refinement, it's got everything you spend the money for here. This powertrain gets five out of five stars. Ooh, wild burrows in the road. Uh, gotta let those little things cross. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> the desert. The chassis of the GLE 53 is one that has a lot of features, technical as well as performance, fully independent front suspension and rear suspension. But what this trim level and grade brings is the AMG tuned version of the Airmatic air suspension, which means it's fully adaptive at all times. It's tied to the drive modes, which can make it soft and cushy. It can make it stiff and responsive. And with the air suspension, you can also adjust this to raise the vehicle for more ground clearance off-road. And because it's fully adaptive and it can adjust on the fly, even when you have it set on comfort for existence, if you start throwing heavy steering, acceleration, or braking inputs at it, it will stiffen up the suspension accordingly. The suspension is all bolted to a very stiff body structure and on this vehicle, as I mentioned with the interior, it does have the acoustic sound package. So it's a very quiet vault-like experience in here. Out on my 70 mile an hour freeway test, the sound decibel rating was 61.8, which is a little bit below average. And so it does have a nice quiet ride and not so much road noise, but this does have a pretty good level of wind noise that tends to be heard over the road noise, even with these larger tires. All this technology and all of these dynamic systems are great for handling on the pavement, but I'm really curious to see how this does off the pavement. Whew. Out here on the desert washboard road, this is a place I love to bring an SUV because it really shows how well bolted together it is, let alone can you really bring it off the pavement. And even though this is a street performance oriented SUV, I wanted to bring it out here because, well, curiosity more than anything, I wanted to see how well it transforms into being something that you can also use for camping or exploring out in the wild. So the first thing I'm noticing is that because we do have these larger performance 20 inch wheels with low profile tires, the ride is a little bit rougher. And that is to say that we don't have the taller sidewall to help cushion a lot of the bumps and the rhythmic washboard surface from bringing it into our experience here. That said, what I am noticing out here is that this vehicle, in spite of these low profile tires, and it's a little bit rougher ride, feels solid. It's well bolted together. I'm not getting any shuddering in the suspension. I'm not getting any rattling, any feeling of looseness from the chassis. And that's a big deal because I've driven some pretty expensive off-road vehicles out here only to find that it feels like a big POS. And this one does not. One thing I have noticed is that the dynamic systems, that is the traction control and the stability control are pretty quick to kick in on these loose gravel corners to keep you going stable. 
And to remind, this does have the air suspension that you can manually raise to give yourself more ground clearance if you're actually going off of a manicured road like this onto the trail. I'm very impressed not only with the on-road performance, but the off-road performance. This is a vehicle that doesn't lose its composure when you go off the pavement. This chassis gets five out of five stars. I don't know if you saw it out there on the video, but there were some wild burrows wandering around while we're doing our testing today. They're beautiful, aren't they? Uh, but I digress. As you might have noticed, I was very impressed with this vehicle. I love the power. I love the handling. I love the feel, the overall driving experience of the GLE class from Mercedes-Benz, whether you're in the four-cylinder turbo all the way up to the turbo V8. This is a vehicle that satisfies me and has satisfied in almost every variation I've test driven. And this is no different. Mercedes-Benz just knows how to offer different ways, different levels, and they do them all very well. That said, let's talk about value because it's a luxury vehicle. You don't need it, right? Is it a good value? I don't know. Uh, look, the thing about the German brands is they stick it to you when it comes to options pricing. If you look at the window sticker on this vehicle, even though we've only spent $8,300 in options, uh, if you look at the individual prices of those options, they're really hitting you for things that come standard in some of the competitors. And by that, I mean Genesis, Genesis, GV70, GV80. They are right on par product wise on a spreadsheet with what this offers in terms of quality, performance, styling, the interior, all the things that make you happy about a luxury vehicle. Does it have the three pointed star on it? No. Are people going to notice that when you drive up to the red carpet? Yes. So you pay for, you pay for it. That's just really the bottom line. Is it a good value? Eh, I don't know. I put the value here at four out of five stars. And part of what goes into that is warranty coverage. Four years, 50,000 miles. Not the best in the business. And you don't really want this when it's out of warranty. If you've ever owned a Mercedes, and I have, you know what I'm talking about. You lease this. That's really what you do. You, you, th you give it back you get another one when when before the warranty's up and that's just what you do uh my opinion <laughs> i'm being a little bit in jest but not so much really uh this is a vehicle that you um you buy because you want it it's not necessarily because it's the best value in the world uh if you're that buyer maybe this isn't for you but if you do spend the money on this i think you're going to be very happy so when i take that four out of five value score and put that in with everything we've already talked about we are at four and a half out of five stars and you know what else it goes on my buy list. Now, I kind of just made fun of, you know, you don't buy this thing. You don't keep it out of warranty, but I'd do it. I mean, I'd lease one. Uh, it goes on my buy list because almost every other GLE and GLE coupe that I have tested in the last couple of years have made it to the I buy list because they're this good. They are worth the money. Buy it, lease it, whatever. Uh, this is a vehicle that you will never look back at in a parking lot and go, God, why did I spend the money on that? It satisfies. And that's what you spend the money for. So there you go. That is my honest, that's what I really think. I always say, I'll tell you what I really think. That's what I really think. So there you go. If you like what we do here, see us on social media. You can see all of our links right down there. And you can also see our latest video right there. Better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.